What connects the number of ways you can throw two dice, the parts of my shopping list I can buy on Amazon, and 1 plus 1 equals 2? The answer is set theory. Starting with our first problem then, how many ways can you roll two dice? Perhaps on approaching this problem, you first determine every way you can roll one dice. You could write them out in a list like this. We can call this list D, strictly. D is the set of all possible dice rolls. That's all a set is, a list of numbers, things or objects, which we can then work with. We can do simple operations, like getting the number of objects, called the cardinality or size of the set. In this case, the set has six objects, one for each dice roll. Perhaps you consider each possible pair of dice rolls as a coordinate like this. If you can work out the number of possible coordinates, then you can work out the number of ways you can roll two dice. If we want to be formal about these coordinates, we could refer to them as D1 and D2, and say that they are both members of the set D. In other words, D1 and D2 are both some dice roll, and both of them together is one possible way to roll two dice. To get each such combination, perhaps we create a grid with each possible roll of one dice on each side. This is a neat illustration of each possible roll. It also gives us a nice way to think about the set of each pair of dice rolls. We can consider it d multiplied by d, or d squared. The size of d squared is quite clearly the size of d multiplied by the size of d, or the size of d all squared. Since the size of d is 6, the size of d squared is 36. Perhaps now you're more familiar with the idea of a set as a list of objects. You start using them for other things, maybe your shopping list. To follow on from this, perhaps you choose to buy some of your shopping on Amazon, and you'd like to know what on your shopping list you need to buy off Amazon. Perhaps you imagine your two sets here as circles, with each object inside the circle. This creates a Venn diagram, where the intersection of the two circles is the items that are both on your shopping list, and that you buy on Amazon. In set notation then, this is referred to as the intersection of the two sets. What if instead, you wish to add your shopping list to the list of items you buy on Amazon? In that case, you would want this larger set, which is called the union of the two smaller sets. A notable fact here is that if the two sets don't intersect, that is to say that they don't have any items in common, the size of the larger set is simply the sum of the size of the two smaller sets. So in this case, the size of the outer set is equal to the size of the shopping list and the size of the items you buy on Amazon added together. Armed with our new fact, let's investigate two sets, one with one item, A, and the second with a different item, B. Since both these sets have one item, their size is 1. The union of these sets is a set with two elements, A and B. Since the size of this set is 2, and we know that the size of a union is equal to the sum of its parts, assuming they don't intersect, we can say that 2 is equal to the sum of the size of both our sets. This fact is more commonly written as 1 plus 1 equals 2. On first look, this feels like a strange and overly mathematical way of viewing a trivial problem. But in truth, this argument is effectively saying that if you have an apple and I give you an orange, you have two pieces of fruit. It's a more formal way of presenting that argument. 